Welcome back, everyone. It is investigative journalism at its finest. 11 Alive's The Reveal series takes an in-depth look at stories that matter most to the communities that we live in. Today, we are sitting down with two of their investigative journalists, Andy Parati and Rebecca Lindstrom, and we're going to take a look at what they are featuring this coming week. Hello, Emmy winners. Hi. Congratulations. Thank you. Good morning. It's exciting. I know you guys work so hard to uncover things that are happening in our community, as I mentioned, that affect all of us, uh, things that we may not even know about, which mm -hmm. is why we mm -hmm. go to you for this information. How did you feel getting recognized for that um, for at the Emmys? I mean, that had to make you feel so special. It, it was a nice recognition. You know, we, we, we get to tell stories about people um, that you don't get to hear very often, shed light into any things, and we—it's a difficult job. So when you get recognized, it's—it's it's good. Yeah. It's a good feeling. And it's a wonderful way to be able to say thank you to the people who opened up their lives, sure, to share their private mm -hmm. stories with us, so that we could move these issues forward, and we get to, on, a, on a bigger platform just say thank you to them. Right. And uh, Andy, we're going to get to you in a minute. I want to start with you, Rebecca. Um, a story that actually hits home with probably many of us, uh, because if you do have that feeling that you're followed or being followed, you're probably right. Uh, it may not be in the way that you expect, but marketers are really using the GPS on our phone to track mm -hmm. us. Tell us more. So it is one of those things that I think most people expect on their phones that someone is tracking them and we go in, mm -hmm. we search all of the settings to see if it is going to uh, be something that we can turn off. And a lot of times you just can't. And I, I think we've got a quick look at what you should expect oh, when you're boy. carrying your phone. Okay. We can go inside of our technology platform and build a virtual fence. Literally a virtual fence just around the contours of this building. And we're talking about airspace, so it doesn't require really any permission to do it. It doesn't require permission to do it. And once you cross that invisible line, the person who paid to have it built can then start sending you ads and even track some of your movements for the next 30 days. I drove around Metro Atlanta with a coworker visiting courthouses, emergency rooms, and car dealerships. We noticed a few ads from competitors while flipping through our social media feeds. Coincidence, maybe. Wow. But when we got to Planned Parenthood, we received information on how to get a 3D model of our unborn baby. Photos from an ultrasound or a video from an ultrasound. An article on caring for newborns and even an ad for a pro-choice group. That's, that's crazy. So it what really does your is. phone say about I you? Know, you have to I think know. about action from that woman. Oh. Uh, exactly, because we we kind of we joke, especially if you have like Alexa in the house. Mm -hmm. You're like, hey, they're listening to us. But to really see that they are tracking our every move. But again, again, I'm not technical. Why can't we just shut the GPS on our phone off? Because there are some games and apps that you put on your phone that doesn't even they don't even need your location to operate. But basically, they're providing you that game by collecting your data and sending it to someone else. And if you go into the settings, I have this word game on my phone that I really enjoy. I went into the settings, I looked, and it says right there, what we collect, your location information. Yeah, hmm. there it is. And what about geofencing around a hospital? I mean, I would think that would be in violation of uh, HIPAA laws. That is one of those ugh, kind of factors for a lot of people, but it is not a violation of HIPAA because they're just collecting information about the ID on your phone. They're not targeting right. your actual mm -hmm. personal, personal information, why you're there. But still, still, some people say, if I'm going to a heart specialist, right. and now they know I went to a heart specialist, now you're sending me ads on new diets for right. you know people with heart conditions. I mean, that's already a violation of privacy to a lot of people. It really yeah. is. Yeah. Um, any other businesses or groups uh, that you found out? Po oh, of course. Politics. We have found that this has already been used in several examples. And again, sort of that icky feeling is, you know, one political political party in Michigan geofenced mega churches so that then they could send targeted ads to folks that they felt were more likely to be evangelicals. So it's just not even the place like, hi, oh I'm at a car God. dealership, mm -hmm. so maybe I'll start seeing Seems ads for car dealerships. Right. This could be happening anywhere you go. And some people really like it because they say, hey, I'm going to get ads that relate to me, and that's good. Other people are like, I like it, but it's maybe we should much, put some limits brother. on it. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, and we'll be able to see the full report when? It's going to be Wednesday night Wednesday at night. 8 o'clock. We've got a primetime special that I know Andy will also talk about. We're mm -hmm. really excited about That's it. Awesome. As well as tonight on Up Late. Okay, terrific. All right, Andy, now I want to turn to you. A compelling investigation this week involving a dead whistleblower. Yeah, she's a former 
counselor in the Department of Juvenile Justice. She repeatedly tried to report claims of misconduct and abuse. She claims supervisors warned her to stop. A few months later, she was dead. It's difficult to find a picture without Angela Lockerbie grinning ear to ear when she's with children. She's always been very drawn to children and taking care of them and wanting to see them succeed and have a better life. Lockerbie's husband, Jay, says it was no surprise when she left her longtime job as an investigator with the Richmond County Sheriff's Department to become a counselor at the Department of Juvenile Justice. She's had a passion for it. Shortly after joining DJJ in 2015, though, Lockerbie says his wife noticed suspicious behavior while working at the agency's Augusta Youth Development Campus. Not from the juveniles, but from the corrections officers. There appeared to be a culture within DJJ that they just operate different. According to emails Angela sent to supervisors over several months, she repeatedly voiced concern about a colleague having an inappropriate relationship with the 16-year-old. Officers sneaking in money, pornography, and marijuana. And even a time when a female officer was holding a carton of urine, threatening to throw it on the youth. But my wife intervened with this. Nothing happened to her. There was no type of disciplinary or sit down and this is unacceptable behavior for an officer. Oh my gosh, yeah. I want to find out what happened, but I guess I have to tune in Wednesday night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this I, is so I, disturbing. It's, it's so disturbing. And to give you a little bit more context of what the story is going to show, essentially one day she goes back to work and she's attacked by one of the detained juveniles. She sustains a major head injury and she gets prescribed on powerful pain medication and dies of an accidental overdose. Now, what? tomorrow and on Wednesday, we're gonna tell you what was left out of an investigative report about her death that may shed some more light that no one knew about until mm -hmm. we started asking questions. Wow, so disturbing. Yeah. Uh, but, but again, here she is thinking she's doing the right thing mm -hmm. and trying to make the higher ups more aware of something that's going on and all of a sudden that, that stops. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Wednesday night, Wednesday night, 8 o'clock, more of Angela Lockerbie's story. We've been working on this story for a year. I literally did the interview with that husband, with her husband, a year ago this month, and it's only now that we were able to get this video to prove what some believe was misconduct and keeping something secret. Okay, thank you both mm -hmm. so much. We look forward to that. Once again, Wednesday night, you can catch the full story uh, on The Reveal. It's 8 p.m. right here on 11 Alive. Thank you both. Thank you, thank you for having Thank me. you so much.